After years of buzz, mobile payments might finally be ready to take off in 2015. Tech companies have long pushed them as the next big thing, but they haven't really seemed viable until now. We call it Apple Pay. Apple Pay appears to be the current market leader. The company has gathered an impressive list of partners that includes banks, credit card companies, and retailers. You do need an iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus to use Apple Pay because older phones don't have the necessary near-field communication chip or NFC chip to make the technology work. But NFC terminals still aren't available everywhere yet. And a group of major retail chains, including Walmart, is working on a competing service and playing hardball, blocking Apple Pay from stores. That system, Current C, is an effort from a whole host of companies to be a mobile payment system for consumers while allowing companies to dodge fees from credit card companies. But Apple Pay has something its competitors don't, a seal of approval from the federal government. At a cybersecurity summit at Stanford University, Apple CEO Tim Cook revealed that Apple Pay will soon be an optional replacement for federal payment cards used for things like Social Security and veterans benefits. The next big one is Samsung Pay. Like Apple, only the newest Samsung devices use the system. The Galaxy S6 launches next month, and the payment system won't roll out until sometime this summer. But even though Apple got their first, Samsung Pay will have a wider reach at its launch. We believe that for any payment service to be successful, universal acceptance is critical. That's because in addition to an NFC chip, Samsung service will use a system from LoopPay. It sends a signal that mimics the magnetic strip you would typically find on the back of a credit card. That means to use Samsung Pay, retailers do not need to upgrade to NFC-enabled payment terminals. The system should work at most places with typical credit card readers. Google Wallet, an easier way to pay. And then there's Google Wallet. It launched back in 2011, but never really managed to catch on. Thanks to a recent deal with Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T, though, Google Wallet now comes pre-installed on most Android phones, which will likely give the service some much-needed exposure. Also, Google bought intellectual property from Softcard, another mobile payments competitor, as part of its big deal. That move makes it seem like Softcard will eventually be folded in to wallet. So three strong options for mobile payment systems, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, and Google Wallet. But tech companies still have to figure out how to get consumers on board. Apple's Tim Cook likes to brag that his company accounts for a lion's share of mobile payments transactions. It's the first and only mobile payment system that's both easy, private, and secure. Consumers, though, have not exactly been flocking to these services. It's likely hard to sell consumers on the security of mobile payments when cybersecurity breaches at major retailers are making a lot of headlines these days. And the argument that mobile payments are more convenient than traditional systems might seem trivial. Swiping a credit or debit card isn't that much different than pulling out your phone. Regardless, the amount of high-profile mobile payment offerings makes it likely that tech companies will keep trying to popularize these services, whether customers want them or not. For Newsy, I'm Lauren Zima.